Hello and welcome to OK at Home DIY. If you're new here, my name is Zena and I have three incredibly easy wood DIY projects for you. This is with the help of a jigsaw, a miter saw, and a hand sander, but they are absolutely easy to do. First DIY I wanted to show you are these cutting boards. We're doing an edge grain cutting board. So I measured two inches down. My handle, top of my handle is two inches over. The bottom of my handle is one inch over. And I centered that on four and a half inches. Took my ruler and just made diagonal lines to connect the dots. And that is where I am going to be cutting these out with my jigsaw. Now, this board is actually a scrap piece. It was a one by 10, but we all know that one by 10s are not actually equal to 10 inches. They're nine inches and more. So um, that's why I went four and a half inches. Taking my jigsaw, now I purchased this at Walmart. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money on tools that work. I've had this a couple years now and I'm just following my lines with my jigsaw. Now with a jigsaw you wanna have, there's like a little notch in that front silver part. That's where you want to follow your line. But I let you know that I actually look directly at my blade and follow my line with the blade. Probably not doing it right, but that's that's how I do it. I try to always make sure I have a like an eagle eye view of my cutting spot and then I go. This one was cranked up to three. I would say make sure your cord is always out of your way. And when you are doing this, just go slow. And then when you get more confidence, you can go a little faster. So I purchased this at Walmart. I think it was $16 um, with after everything that's been going on. I know prices have been going up. So, um, but this has lasted me a couple of years and I think you would be able to find something budget friendly there as well. Next, I'm taking my orbital hand sander. Again, I got this at Walmart. This is not a Walmart ad, but this is just where I purchase my tools inexpensively. I'm taking 220 grit and sanding down this cutting board. I make sure I get all my edges and I kind of round them out and the sides and the surface of the board. When I'm done with that, I wipe it clean and I stain it with coffee just to try to make it look a little darker. Now I don't have any footage of that, but I just wanted to let you know. If you are gonna stain it, you wanna have a food grade stain. As well as when you seal it, you want a food grade sealant. I am going to be using this oil that I purchased off of Amazon. It's food grade oil, it's butcher block oil. It's sealant and conditioner. When you get in to put the oil on, you want to really give it a generous amount all over the whole board and you do this until the board stops absorbing the oil then when that happens you let the board dry overnight and then you're able to use it after 24 hours after it's all dried this is such an easy simple thing to do with a 1 by 10 or a 1 by 8 or 1 by 6 however you want your your cutting board to be and a simple tool jigsaw from Walmart so you're not much into the tools and you're not much into the wood. This is a great scrap wood kind of project to do. And I absolutely love how they turned out. Let me know in the comment box what you think. I am hosting with my friend Marsha from Marsha's Mush and Stuff this DIY wood project challenge. Marsha does lots of Dollar Tree DIYs, Dollar Tree reviews, but she also does hauls from a lot of budget friendly places. If you don't know Marsha, please go to her channel and check it out. You will not be disappointed. She is so fun to hang out with. So this is a part of an open invite. And so please go check out Marsha's video as well as the videos of everybody else on the playlist. I can't wait to see what they all made. On to the second DIY. I am taking a one by 10 and cutting it up into seven inches across. These are gonna be like 
wall placards to hang towels on. This is not my original idea. I am making this for a friend for a housewarming gift. Painted everything white and then we sectioned off where we wanted to put their names. Of course, I went ahead and put the sawtooth hanger on the back first, and then we cut out a stencil using Chloe from Cricut. Now, our stencil was three by six, and to stencil things on, you really do want to put a coat of Mod Podge first and then the paint. Because the Mod Podge helps the paint not to leak out from underneath the stencil, and here is how it turns out. So I pulled my stencil off, not when my paint or my Mod Podge was dry. It was just a little bit dry. So then after my paint dries, I put on a coat of sealing wax. This is Kills Sealing Wax. This is just the clear wax, but I absolutely love using it because it's really quick. You just wipe it on and wipe it off and you're able to move along with your project. Now it does take a couple days to cure, but you're still able to finish your project in good time. Putting on the hardware, these are hooks from Walmart. We did establish where we wanted each one of the hooks to go, and I did some pre-drilling on that, and then I went ahead and installed the screws. So I actually used a drill in this video too. I didn't say that at the beginning with all my power tools, but this is how it turned out. Let me know down in the comment box below what you think. Last DIY, I'm making little mini rolling pins, taking the handle from a plunger from Dollar Tree. Now, I did not use this plunger at all. It's brand new. I cut off the very top that's rounded, and then I went down six inches and cut that off. Just holding it very firm and pressing it against the, the blade as you cut through it is the best way to get as best of a straight edge. I just wanted to show you how you could do things with multiple things with this jigsaw. I took it in after I sanded the edges and I'm placing these handles on with super glue gel. Making sure to hold for just a few seconds until the glue bonds to both materials. Now these handles are actually pawns from the chess game from Dollar Tree. I thought they made the most beautiful handles. Next I just wanted to embellish them a little bit. I did cut out the words thankful and blessed from my Cricut. If you go to the Dollar Tree, you can use rub-on stickers and you can use any of their other letter stickers to put on there as well. And you can paint the stickers if they're not the color you want them to be. With my Cricut cutout here, I just used one of my system fonts. Just using clear contact paper as my transfer paper, I rub on my vinyl letter. And then I add some lemon ribbon from Dollar Tree. I do the right over left and left over right knot to make it the most stylish. And then I trim off the end, fold it in half, and I cut from the corner in to dovetail. I do this on both ends of the ribbon and for both rolling pins. Here's the end result. I just love them. Thank you so much for coming over and hanging out and watching today. If you're new here, I'd love to invite you to subscribe. I do all kinds of DIYs, trying to make them the most budget friendly as I can. Please give this video a like and let me know down in the comment box which one you like the most. Special thank you to my friend Marsha for hosting this with me and all the creators down in the playlist. And please go check that playlist out. You'll get plenty of inspiration. And until the next time, everyone, you have a good one. Bye.